opening statement? Yeah, I really don't have as red a face. And this thing just kind of gets you, man. Every time I look at myself, I almost throw up. But now it's even worse. You know what? I'm uh, a little disappointed in the, you know, we had that eight, 10 point lead. And, uh, you know, I thought we made some plays that weren't very good. And they made a couple good plays. That's a very good basketball team. I mean, I know you think what you think. They went through the COVID too. And I, I talked to his coach before the game. And by the way, he's got to be, I know Juwan's done an unbelievable job, but he's done a hell of a job for that team. And I'm hoping that his AD takes a look at Jim for that job because uh, players played hard for him. They never quit on him. And that's a, that's the mark of something special, but I thought we executed some things when we were down four. I thought Marcus Bingham did a better job. I uh, started Malik Hall. Uh, and the reason for that was Joey came in two days ago and said, coach, I'm not playing as good. Malik's playing good. He's, he says, I'm fouling. I'm in foul trouble every game. It's kind of like Jaron Jackson went through. He says, what do you think of bringing me off the bench? And you know what? That, that takes a man to do that. Um, because that's exactly how it happened. And and uh, it really takes a man then to go up and back it up by playing your butt off. So we get 21 points off that position and seven or eight rebounds. And um, Joey hits those two big free throws. He hits a couple shots. Uh, uh, Malik gets a couple big rebounds. I, I thought uh, that was a big help for us. I thought, uh, you know, Josh Langford had some great looks again. And uh, God, he'd been shooting so good. I thought he was kind of over the hump. And I don't think he was fatigued tonight. I don't think he was tired. Just gets his thousand point during the game, but he missed some great shots and a layup. And you can't make you can't miss those and win big games. And uh, we found a way to do that. And I think that was good. But we got something out of everybody, you know. Marble came in and got a couple of big plays, got five rebounds in in 10 minutes, you know, and he he did better. Uh we mixed our lineup up a little bit, and uh, and still the uh, straw that stirred the drink was Aaron Henry. We got a lot out of Foster. We got, I thought, one of the better games out of Rocket. You know, uh, made a couple big plays down the stretch as far as who he got the ball to and what we ran. So it wasn't pretty, um, but uh, you know, another great defensive performance, holding them to 34 and 21. Turnovers were a big thing I talked to you about. We had 11 and that's not bad considering we had three in the first minute and a half. And rebounding was pretty even. Um, you know, again, if we hit two or three of those threes that Josh has uh, that were wide open, um, you know, I think we shoot 50% from the three. So it doesn't save us. We're still a work in progress, but uh, I, I was proud of this team uh, Aaron in the huddle, we're four down, so it's time we win a game like this. And I thought that's exactly what they did. They executed, they won a game, they got a couple big rebounds late. Some tough calls, I thought tough calls, but worked out. Questions? We'll start with Matt Charbonneau. Time you mentioned it wasn't pretty, um, and it feels like nothing really comes easy for this team this year. Um, but considering you got the stops late, is it almost a point where you don't you don't really give a, you know, you don't care about that. A win's a win right now. And you were able to find a way to make those plays late. You know, I, what I liked about it is um, just what you said. We, we gutted it out at the end. We executed a few things offensively. Uh, we kind of went to Aaron and, you know, I even thought his pass underneath. I thought the guy got clubbed, but it's neither here nor there. I thought it was the right decision. Um, I thought we, we did grit our teeth and played pretty good defense. And we won it the old fashioned way. You know, it, was a, it was a Purdue, Michigan State, Minnesota, Clem Haskins, Michigan State game. They are very physical. They are very good. And the big kid inside, it's, it's been fun to watch his progression here. I, I really enjoy when a guy is awful and then he gets to be decent and he gets to be good. And right now, he's a very good player. He can score down there. He's a great rebounder. He's a great offensive rebounder. He, he plays with some passion. You heard him talking. I love that kid. He did a lot of good things. And, and as I said, I thought Jim did some great things. Uh, he's got 
there's some good players there. I'm telling you, Lundy's a very, very, very good player. Brockington, we did a hell of a job on him. I thought we did a pretty good job on dread in sessions, but, uh, you know, couldn't really, uh, Lundy, uh, you know, he goes over four over two. I mean, can't ask for more of what we did. Uh, Jones hit some shots and then hit some free throws last year. If you remember, he killed us single handedly and Hera was, uh, was pretty good too, but, uh, yeah, I would have taken a half point win to be honest with you, Matt, if there's ever such a thing and, and, uh, you know, crap or any other word you want to use is cool with me. You know, I, I, I just want to get a win. Next, we'll go to Lindsay Huddleston. Hey, Tom, congratulations on that. Obviously, um, going back to Joey and his decision, you complimented his maturity. But can you talk a little bit about, I guess, the culture that makes someone confident enough to even go to their coach and ask for that when they could probably have that kind of put them back, you know, uh, you know, going forward by, by asking something like that? No, I, I wouldn't lie to you if I said this day and age, that was surprising when he came in. I think he had talked to his parents, you know, and his parents are have an athletic background too and his dad played and and you know I think he's just searching uh, you know he what I like I love guys that can self-evaluate and he knows he hasn't been playing as good and uh you know the other night I mean he plays 13 minutes he's in there two minutes at a time and gets a foul every time and if you remember back when Jared Jackson went through that you know we were we got to the point where he fouled once we'd take him out and we'd hardly play him the first half and that's not good either but Tonight, I just thought he had more confidence. He he took the ball off the dribble. I think he just said, the hell with it, I'm going to play. And that's kind of what kids got to do, you know. But there's so much pressure on these kids right now if you really look at all of it. And this is where the COVID thing, as I've been talking about each week, I just don't think anybody will have any idea of what it's like to be, you know, in a confined area for so long and just not have a normal life. And it affects everybody differently. But I was really proud of Joey because he did come in and, you know, I said, well, you want me to talk to Malik? Yeah, call him tonight, you know? And so I called Malik, make sure he had a day ahead of time and knew what was going on. And um, so the next day in practice, I told my team the day before the game, this is what we're doing. It doesn't change any playing time. I don't know how many minutes. Uh, let me look here. Uh, Malik played 20 and Joey played uh, 21, so it didn't change their minutes a lot. Uh, I still think Joey Hauser is a big key for us as we move forward because of the way he can shoot the ball, and he'll get that back. You know, it's it's not been an easy off season for any of these guys, especially the new guys. So I'm I'm really proud of the kid. Now, you're right; it does take something to come in and tell the head coach that, and he came in and sat down, and um, it was actually enjoyable. I, I really got something out of it personally. And uh, who knows where it takes us. But Joey Hauser is still a very, very, very important part of, of uh, this team. And uh, whether I start him or don't, um, he'll be playing minutes. Great. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Our next question, we'll go to Jane at the State News. Hi, Tom. I have a question about that starting Malik as well. Just wondering how you kind of evaluated him today, not only in his start, but also down the stretch when he kind of stayed aggressive throughout the game. Yeah, you know, uh, Malik got hit in the head pretty good. I was a little worried that uh, that one time, but, you know, the only thing he struggled with was, was the free throws. You know, he rebounded really good, uh, got some big time rebounds. Um, in fact, I don't think they gave him one. He got that one on our end where he put it back up and then he has no offensive rebounds. So maybe that'll change, but three for four from the field. He played pretty good defense. Um, Malik's a smart kid too. And it's pretty cool when two guys, you know, they were pulling for each other hard. Um, it's, it's that kind of moment, you know, every season you need something and let's face it. We dug a big hole and some of it our fault, some of it not our fault, but things like that kind of tell the rest of the players how selfless somebody is. Um, and I think that is a, uh, a monumental step. So I thought Malik handled it well. Um, you know, I think it was probably, he was probably a little more nervous than he let on to. And, and uh, that's a good thing too. So maybe both guys will calm down a little bit and we can keep moving forward. Thank you. Next question is from Sarah at the State News. 
Hi, Tom. I was just wondering if you had any words about Josh making his 1,000 career point mark today. Yeah, the players celebrated about it in the, in the locker room. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that a couple of things, uh, you know, sometime we'll have a celebration on the court. I'm hoping it's when his parents are here. I'm hoping it's when there's a few fans here. Uh, these are the things, uh, the memory-making moments that this COVID has really taken away from us. So I didn't want to do anything on the court right then because he deserves more. But in the locker room, uh, guys were pretty fired up for him. You know, Josh was Josh. Uh, and he's probably mad that he missed some of those shots. But still, to go through what he went through, to play as little as he sort of played, and uh, to be a 1,000-point scorer and be in that illustrious list is um, – Pretty impressive, and uh, I'm proud of him. I'm happy for him. It'll give him just one more thing to feel good about in, in what has been a tough, tough, tough career with all the injuries. Next question is from Rico Cooney. Hey, Tom, just to go back uh, go back to Joey a little bit. I don't know how much you as coaches look at these kind of things, but uh, looking at his body language coming off the bench as opposed to starting and playing the way he did the – past few games it, it was just kind of night and day the kid just looked relaxed he didn't yeah. look he was all tight and balled up yeah you know and and, and you, you never know why but I Rico I I, I, I agree with you 100 percent and that's kind of what he told me you know and he told me that after the game you know he said he felt good and felt good for Malik you know I mean as I said there aren't many people that are that you know, sometimes I think he's unconfident in himself because I think he should shoot it more. But sometimes maybe he's com comfortable in his own skin because he had enough gumption to come in and do it. And with, you know, 90% of the players wouldn't do that. And uh, I looked at it as a complete positive. And God, when I, I saw the same thing. I saw his body language when he first got the ball and drove it. And I said, here we go, you know, and um, I'm not saying it's all solved. It's going to be a day by day thing, but we're going to make some progress here. And, uh, you know, the one thing we got in this crazy league of ours is, um, as hard as it is, you got your opportunities, you know, we got Iowa coming in here now and we're going to focus on Iowa like nobody's tomorrow and see if, you know, if you can win one of those games, now all of a sudden you start getting back into the human race a little bit. And, uh, so that'll be the goal, you know, but boy, when you look at it and you think of who's still coming up, it's a who's who of college basketball's top 20 teams right now. And, uh, but I said early, I thought we should have beat Purdue. I thought we could have beat Wisconsin. I thought we did a hell of a job at Iowa. I thought we've overcome a lot of stuff. I think I did a poor job in some things early. I think our players didn't always play well, but We've been through health and uh, talking to Jim before the game, you know, they had it all right after Christmas and uh, talking to Fred the other night, you know, the three of us that have been through the most with this um, boy, it's, I don't ever want to give the kids credit or, you know, give them an excuse, but they've been through a lot and uh, they're hanging. And I, I would agree with you. I thought Joey, look the same way and if he could grow a beard like you maybe we'll even get him a little better next question comes from chris solari hey tom you kind of lead into a little bit of this um you guys have had those struggles and you haven't had things go your way in a lot of different areas you get a lane violation to help you you get a tip in from rocket um a long rebound i mean do you feel like that that some of those things were a result of the the guys kind of buying in and getting a little making a little bit more effort to get make those plays happen for you guys well you're right rockets tip in was big you know we did have a lane violation on them but we also had a lane violation on us that took a point away and you know i i i still thought in that one stretch and we were 10 up i thought we were playing really smooth and good and then we just let down there was a two missed assignments to be very honest with you. we gave up two threes and I think the beauty of it, and this is what I did enjoy about Rocket tonight. You know, he came up to me after. He said, Coach, I, that was my fault on that. I said, you can self-evaluate that? And he said, yeah. And I said, then you just made big progress, my man. And I, I, I really think, you know, um, 
maybe he'll have more confidence. I had him in there at the end, and yet I was very pleased with Foster too. And but uh, you know, Rock capable of doing some things defensively that helped us at the end. Uh, so I don't know. You know, uh, I know this. We've had enough things go against us that we deserved a few things. And even in this game, I I just think there's some plays that. That was a critical play when Aaron threw that ball inside. I thought, you know, and so I'll, I'll just take the win and be happy with it. And, and that brings me to the second part of this is, is Marcus. I mean, that Marcus was aggressive around the basket and attacking on the boards. I mean, do you win this game without the, the, the way he played down the stretch? Well, he went up and got a couple of big rebounds, as you said, in tips. I mean, I don't know how many rebounds did Marky end up with. Uh, you know, uh, nine, but four for five from the line too. And, uh, you know, it was one of his, I don't know if he did miss one or if that was the one we had a lane violation. I'm not sure, but all in all, I thought, uh, you know, Marcus played better. He played within himself. He didn't take any shots that were out of his, you know, that he can make, but hasn't made yet. So why take them now? We don't, until well, we get that down in practice. But I thought uh, he was a difference in this game. He, his size and his shot blocking a couple times, I think he had one or two blocks. Um, yeah, I was pleased by Marcus. He played 18, 20 minutes and didn't look dead tired. And that guy's a load that he played against. He was up on ball screens. He did a lot of good things. Just a step, guys. It's a step, but it's a big step. We have two final questions for Coach. We'll start with Brendan Quinn. Tom, those last uh, two defensive possessions, um, I guess when you, you you had huddles before each, I believe, um, you, how much of it is, is is coaching up what you're doing defensively? How much of it is telling them that to, to think that <laughs> maybe something won't go wrong this time? <laughs> you know, I hate to give you credit, but that – that does happen in a huddle, especially the way the years went, you know, and that's where I gave Aaron some credit. Rocket too. Rocket kept saying, Hey, we got to win this game, you know? And, and uh, I think that was some of it. I mean, we still made some mistakes even at the end, but you know what? We played as hard as I've seen us play. And as I said, you know, that second team we held under 50, that's, you know, that's one thing, but the, the field goal percentage is going down, you know, a lot. And, uh, that needs to go down because it was high for us. You know, it needs to get down in those 30s. And we're, you know, we're doing a little better job of that. And uh, I thought my staff did a good job in scouting. And, but yeah, in that huddle, I, I think you're 100% right uh, that we, uh, we had to keep saying, you know what? And they said it more than I did. It's time we win these games. We got to start proving we can win these games. And uh, I don't want to make it out like we beat the Celtics, but I'm telling you, that is a good basketball team. I, I'll guarantee you they're going to win more than a few games coming up. They're, they're very good, and they're, he, he's a, done a hell of a job with them. Those kids played hard. Boy, they could have quit on them when they were 8 or 10 down, and uh, they didn't. And I, I give him a lot of credit for that, and hopefully it turns into a job someday. Thanks. And our final question for Coach comes from Nick Mantis at WLNS. Coach, when you think about the aggressive play of your team for the entire game and the way in which they were going up against guys who maybe were a little bit bigger than them, bigger bodies, but they were able to just go at them nonstop the entire game, does that kind of give you a little bit of confidence as this team now has to prepare for a team like Iowa? Yeah, I mean, believe it or not, the kid at Iowa is as big, maybe a little bigger, um, not as quick as this kid, but probably a better offensive player, but – I mean, we did have to bang. We gave up some rebounds, but uh, I think that'll give Marcus a lot of confidence. I think Julius came in and did a few things. I think, you know, uh, that was encouraging. I, you know, Marty, we just got to get him some minutes. The poor kid, if he was starting to play eight, 10 minutes, and I really feel we need him. And Kithier coming back and playing six, eight minutes was good too. So hopefully uh, those things were all positives. Uh, now I'm looking forward to one thing. I just working tonight, tomorrow night, the next night and, and getting a chance to play Iowa, which would be a, a, a big game for us, you know, and they're all big at this time of year, but, uh, 
you know, you win two in a row, you finally get a home game, you play two home games in the last 30 some days. Um, it's been different, but uh, I'm proud of them. And, uh, and I'm pleased and I'm excited to go to work tomorrow, tonight, right now. Let's go, let's play. Thanks a lot, guys. See you later.